Robert Wilson. Thank you, uh, Chair Padilla. Uh, most of my, I mean, the line of questioning from Commissioners Boschko, Gold, Emanzada Hart, and um, Aranga were kind of really in the same place where I, where I am. Uh, and when we had that discussion um, in October, it, it, it really, the, it seems very passive to me about what's going to happen with this ISFACI alternative plan. And I, and I will say that I, I have zero confidence the federal government is going to, is going to in my lifetime, um, uh, have an have a repository for for this waste, and I also believe that probably within my lifetime, this is to see is going to be outdated. So, when we get these progress reports associated with just looking, for, you know, what opportunities, I really want something more active. That's a very passive um, methodology for finding an alternative is to see, and I don't think it necessarily has to be on site. And, and I was really disappointed in the conversation last time that we had where uh, Camp Pendleton across the way there was off, off the, um, you know, off the conversation because, well, they didn't want to, or they weren't interested. Well, I, I'm just, I, I think in, from, from the perspective of the commission and, and uh, SoCal Edison and every, and we all need to advocate for getting this is in a different location than it currently is. I, and um, the fact that some arm of the federal government is not in, you know, can't work with the NRC, you know, on what is quite literally a national security issue, which is the, this waste and where it's located and, and its potential for impacts and, and danger to the community. I, I just find that to be very disturbing. Um, and I, I would really like to ask that if it's possible that there's just a more active description of this sort of, you know, check-in or plan with relationship to opportunities for the ISFACI, that, is, that, that what we get from them isn't just we looked around and shrugged our shoulders because people said no or something looked hard, that, they, that there's real activism on the part of the applicant to, to find another place for this is to see that's kind of that's that's where I'm this I'm just having a real hard time with that um Mr. I just think it's, so maybe, that's kind of where I'm at maybe in answering the commissioner's question you could also refer to some of the federal legislative recent efforts that have been made in terms of federal funding that's going to go to some of those federal activities supposedly not that I certainly share the commissioner's sentiments and lack of optimism around whether they'll finally do it, but maybe you can respond to that and include some of that information as well. Right. I will try. <laughs> um, and, 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 and we might want to have uh, Mr. Palmisano also speak to this because it is my understanding that they are actively looking for offsite options here. Um, and he can speak to that much better than I can. Um, and I also want to make a comment about um, we look so closely at that option of putting this ISFC on the Mesa on the other side of Highway 5. I think it was the very first question that I asked uh, when this project came before us. Um, and the issue there is that it is owned um, uh, by the Navy and uh, it is being used by Camp Pendleton and they just won't allow that area to be used. Um, and it's also was my understanding that the NRC may have had some concerns about it as well because they would have to be expanding um, the uh, uh, the security area, um, you know, for this for this plant. Um, I don't have a lot of detail myself about all the individual pieces of legislation that are being proposed right now, but I understand that just about all of them are really looking at um, uh, of of trying to. Um, look at changing 
how the spent fuel will be moved in terms of order. Um, so there are some pieces of legislation that are proposing that where a plant has been decommissioned, that that uh, spent fuel would, move, would be moved faster than if it was an older plant. There's some uh, pieces of legislation that are proposing that if you are in a coastal area like Songs that is subject to seismic hazard and tsunami uh, risk, uh, that those be given higher priority than other areas of, of the country. Um, what I can't answer to, and maybe John can, is just what the status of those pieces of legislation are at this point. I can provide a brief update. My understanding is there is some legislation that went through one of the House, I believe it, uh, one of the House committees and was moved to the full House. As Allison said, there's um, one, the one piece of legislation that I'm familiar with that's gotten that far does the kind of things that Allison spoke to in terms of prioritizing where and how the order of spent fuel would be um, relegated to a potential facility. There are other pieces of legislation, including one that Representative Levin had that did um, a, a version of that as well. But I believe what happened is, is that a bunch of those bills were bundled together and moved out of committee. I don't believe it's passed the full house um, this on the Senate side in Congress, there have been um, a couple of bills, including one that I believe was co-sponsored by uh, Senator Feinstein that would do things like that, but also go much further um, and set up a whole new administration to address this issue, meaning a whole new governmental body at the federal level to address this issue. Um, and there are certainly several other bills, and, and I believe the NRC in their response letter, they probably elaborated a bit more than I'm able to right now. Um, so that's one point that I would make. The other point that I would make is, in addition, um, I believe that, as has been referenced before, the whole idea of, of coming out of the court settlement for Edison to work on its strategic plan specific to songs, um, to uh, address this issue in the longer term. Um, my understanding is that's probably about six months away, maybe, or so from being finalized. Um, that could be another point of, uh, uh, or another opportunity to further the conversation. And I believe Tom could probably speak, Tom Palmisano could speak more uh, to the specifics of what's in there, except what I would understand is that there's a piece that is talking about how can we all as a community um, come together to advocate for what we're all after, as well as in addition and in addition to looking at very specific uh, recommendations and how to be ready in terms of transporting fuel offsite once and if uh, a, a so-called interim repository in New Mexico or Texas or wherever becomes available. Yeah, this, this is Tom Palmasano. I'd like to elaborate a little more. So we committed to developing a strategic plan to identify actions that we can take along with others to help facilitate the development of an option to move Song's fuel offsite. Related to that is also a tra conceptual transportation plan as to how this fuel would be moved from Song's to somewhere nominally in the Southwest. Uh, you, and, and we're well along in development of the strategic plan. We've hired a very capable consultant with a broad range of experience related to nuclear matters, licensing matters, you know, financial matters, legislative matters, uh, partnered with uh, Ernie Moniz, the former Secretary of Energy, as well as others, to help us really understand and flesh out what the current barriers are and what it's going to take and what venue to get a facility developed offsite. The other thing it's going to look at actions, it's going to relook at Camp Pendleton, for example. It's going to relook at whether moving our fuel to another nuclear power plant is feasible. It's going to look at actions, can, you know, uh, one of these two private interim storage facilities, how likely are they and what they need. It's really going to start with all options to develop a facility offsite, what actions are needed and what we need to do, and quite frankly, what help we need from local stakeholders, from state commissions, from state government to help make this happen. We're gonna have that plan in early 2021 and release you know, a, a summary of that publicly. And uh, we'd uh, really like the opportunity to brief the staff and then possibly the commission on what that plan contains 
and some of the important elements. Because we're all in agreement, this is this is not this is an untenable situation for the long term. We don't want spent fuel stored at songs any longer than it has to be. And the real answer to that is we need an offsite facility. And through the chair, just you know, one more reason I have a lot of anxiety about this is I find that the casks were it seems like the the response to potential inspection and repair are sort of an afterthought to the design of the casks in which the canisters are put into. And I just find that really disturbing. And it seems like if we can get this into the next, some somewhere else, get this ISC move, then that design could be well, well more better thought out in this process. Um, so that's why I just, I'm just very strong on that. If there is a report that's going to be coming back to us um, to talk about how we can advocate for moving it past this point, then I would be very uh, in favor of that. But with, but because of this, look, this if there are, if there is a way to increase inspections that we can do today um, in, in a manner that was uh, supported and, and, and uh, by, uh, or suggested by surf rider, then I, then I think that that might alleviate a bit of anxiety in terms of that interim time between these two places where we have a current ISFC and where that next sort of interim location will be. So that's my comments for today. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson.